Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Allah, who ek bar Allah, who ek bar? Allah, who ek bar? Ashhadu la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu la ilaha illallah. Allah, I Okay. Oh. Oh. Want to cut it down. <clears throat> وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله. I seek refuge in Allah against the accursed Satan, the Shaitan, the enemy to all mankind. With God's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. All the praise and the thanks belongs to Allah. 
I praise him, I seek his assistance, I beseech his guidance, and I ask for his forgiveness. I bear witness without hesitation or reservation without force, without being paid or made that our lives won. He has no partners in his rule of the heavens and the earth. And I bear witness that Muhammad ibn Abdullah, 1400 years ago, to whom the Quran was revealed, is Allah's servant and messenger. He is cousin of me, and he is the seal to all the prophets. Dear beloved believers, once again, peace be unto you. Assalamu alaikum. We thank Allah for allowing us to gather for the Juma, the Juma day, a very special day for us Muslims. And we are here also, too, because this is a very special weekend for us as Muslims, especially for us coming through the experience of the nation of Islam. And we are celebrating uh, the Mosque Cares Ministry of Imam W.D. Muhammad, Savior's Day 2023, alhamdulillah. So this is a, a special occasion for us. And the topic and the theme for this uh, weekend's program is building sustainable family and community life. Building sustainable family and community life. Today, inshallah, we're going to share a few words from Surah 66, Ayat 6. And when we think about the number 666, you know, in the Christian world, they say that's the number of the devil. But Allah in the Quran is pointing us to something in the Quran. In Surah 66, Ayat 6, Allah is reminding us of something, pointing us to something in the Quran. So, inshallah, we're going to share a few words from the Quran, inshallah. Philosophy is in the Quran. Yeah, you have Ladina Amanu. Ku and Fusikum, wa ah nikum Narun, wa Wakudu, ha Wakudu, ha. Nasu wa wahijratu wahijratu. Allah says, O you who have faith, O ye who believe, save and protect yourselves and your families from a fire whose fuel is people. Men and stones, over which Allah has appointed angels, harsh and severe. They do not disobey Allah in what Allah has commanded. And they do what they are commanded. So here Allah in the Quran is pointing to calling the believers, the Muslims, speaking to the people of faith, asking them to do what? To be saviors, to be saviors. And we know this is Savior's Day weekend, but Allah is calling the people of faith, the new Muslim community at the time, to be saviors, to save yourself from and your family from a fire that eats up people and stone. Now, when we look at the shore, Allah says, nas, nas. And when we, we know that Allah has in the Quran a surah dedicated to nas, mankind. Surah uh, 114 in the Quran, nas. And it's translated as people or mankind. People or mankind. But when Allah gives us a meaning from the Quran, he's speaking to a particular people. And Surah so Nas is speaking to people who were once people of faith, people of knowledge, people who received revelation, people who received revelation. So Allah has dedicated the Surah in the Quran, Surah 114, and is speaking to men and jinn, speaking to the men and the jinn. But here in this verse, in this surah, this ayah, Allah says, 
speaking to Nas again. So Allah is speaking to the people of faith again. And then Allah says, a fire that consumes the people and also stone. Stone. So you say, well, why is Allah, you know, why does a stone have to be in the fire? When we think about fire, sometimes we see stone. You know, so what is a stone? Make the fire hot? No, Allah is not speaking to a physical stone that we think of. Or not a stone in his creation or a rock. He's not speaking to that. Allah is speaking to people again. Some of us remember the song that by the temptation, Papa was a Roman stone. Well, you know, men refer to each other and, and people, we refer to each other as stone. Rolling stone. People were called cornerstones. And even in the religious order, they called people stone, or the cornerstone, or the living stone of God, or the living stone of the church. So here Allah is using allegorical language, speaking to those people again. So Allah is speaking to people who had knowledge and people in the religious order. So Allah says, oh, ye who believe. So Allah is talking to the people who claim to be people of faith. This is who Allah is talking to. See, a person who doesn't have faith, they'll read that and they say, oh, <laughs> stone. <laughs> yeah, I use stone to heat the fire up. Yeah. But that's allegorical language that Allah is using. How when we picture a stone house, stone makes the fire hot. Stone, it makes it hotter and hotter. So Allah is using that allegorical language and, and relating it to the life in, in the people, in the religious people's lives. So Allah says, O ye who believe, who save, protect yourselves and your families from a fire whose fuel is people and stone. And like we said, it's talking to the religious people and it's talking to the stone-hearted people. Some people are so stone-hearted that you can't reach them. And when we read in the surah, Allah says in surah 2, ayat 7, Allah says, Allah has set a seal on their heart, on their hearing, and on their eyes is a veil. Great is the penalty they incur. Of the people, there are some who say, we believe in Allah in the last day, but they do not believe. They do not believe. So, and also in Surah 2, Ayat 74, Allah says, Henceforth were your hearts hardened. They became like rocks, even worse and harder and stronger. For among rocks, there are some <coughs> from which gush forth others there were which split asunder for water, and others which sink, which sink for the fear of Allah, and Allah is, is not unmindful of what they do. So here again, Allah is not talking about physical rocks. Allah is still talking about cold, stone-hearted people. Allah says that those, and we know some hard people, especially in the city of Chicago, you know, on the south side and different parts of Chicago, there's some hard people. But Allah says those people, they're going to split, they're going to break down and gut, the tears are going to gush forth because of the circumstances are going to be so bad that the hardest of people are going to break down the front. <coughs> Allah is going to cause them to submit. They're going to split open like it's split open and water's going to gush forth. So that's talking about the emotion, the emotional self. The water's going to gush forth. And, you know, when people get emotion, they, they cry. They break down and cry. Tears run forth. Some of the hardest people that you think. But if you look in the privacy of their own house, they put their hands down and they cry. They cry. <laughs> and even some of the atheists who claim, oh, I don't believe in God. Well, you let Allah start shaking his room up. The first thing the atheist is going to say, 
Oh God. Huh? Yeah, that, that's his mind is foolish enough to say, I don't believe in God. But the soul and the limbs are testifying and say, We believe in God. Oh God, help us. Huh? The limbs are testifying to say, We still believe in God. Help us, Allah, help us. Please don't let the earth take, take us and swallow us up. See? But the conscious, the foolish, the foolish heart can go against the, the will that Allah has established the soul to submit to. Because Allah says, there is no compulsion. So Allah doesn't compose people to believe in him, to accept him. So Allah gives people a will to live their life on how they choose. Allah gives them a will to choose decisions, make decisions on however they choose. But they still are going to be held accountable and they still are going to be responsible. And so when Allah tells your hands and your feet, your limbs, we're going to testify against you. And so on the day when it's time to call you to account, Allah is going to say, shut up, Bob. And the hands and feet are going to say, yes, Allah, he made me do it. He made me steal. He made me rob. He made me run up and do things that I didn't want to do. Yes, Allah, he made me do it. So they say, uh, uh, oh, don't be snitching. <laughs> huh? Snitches get stitches. Well, you got snitches assigned to you at all times of your life. There are snitches with you because those snitches are working on Allah's behalf. And when Allah calls to account, the snitches are going to tell because they submit to Almighty God Allah. Allah Akbar. Allah. Allah. So Allah is reminding us. In Surah 66, Ayah 6. O ye who have faith, save yourselves and save your families from a fire whose fuel is men and stone. Allah has angels appointed, harsh and severe, and they do not disobey in what he commands them to do. So Allah is reminding us in this Surah that the angels are assigned to Almighty God Allah. They command, they do what Allah commands them to do. They don't disobey. And when Allah calls the angels to do a task, that's it, that's all. Because the angels are going to follow the command that Allah commands them to do. Allah right by. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, Nabi Muhammad and wa ali alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. All the praise and the thanks belongs to Allah. We ask Allah's peace and blessings on our noble Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on the family of Muhammad, on the companions, and all of the followers of Muhammad. Ameen. So, dear beloved believers, this surah is a surah that was revealed during the time when the prophet was establishing his mystery. And it is reported that this surah was revealed, I believe it was in Medina. So this surah was revealed specifically because of circumstances that took place within Muhammad's immediate family. See, when Muhammad was building the ummah, building the community, he, 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 he was married, he had several wives. So he married, according to the circumstances that he was building the Ummah, building the community. So he would marry different tribes, different people uh, from different tribes. So he had several wives. So this surah was revealed at a time when a couple of the wives of the prophet, see the, see the people were, were human beings. See, we were, see the prophet during the time of his mission, the community was still learning, still growing. So the prophet, his wives, they were human beings, so they fell to human uh, experiences. So a couple of the wives had came, came together to conspire. It was one of the wives they, did, they didn't like. 
So they came together, they were going to conspire against them. And so the prophet loved honey. He loved honey. So one of the wives would always give him honey. So a couple of the wives got jealous of that. So they didn't like that. So they came together and they conspired. And they said, well, if he comes to you, you tell him that whatever that is, he eating his, his breath stink. And the other one said, they said, and so if he came to the other one, they said, okay, I'm going to tell him if, if, he, if, if he comes, I'm going to tell him your, your breath stink. But Allah is so wise and so safeguarding, save yourself and save the family. Allah was safeguarding the family of the prophet. So Allah revealed the surah and, and exposed what their scheme was. So Allah revealed it to them. So Allah revealed it to the prophet. And so the prophet addressed him. He said, well, who, who told you that? He said, the most high, the all-knowing. Share this with me. So their plan was to, to and it, the prophet, when they shared it with him, you know, he said, well, look, I'm going a, I'm to a stop eating honey. I'm going to stop eating honey. I said, that. So Allah had to intervene because these problems and issues of envious and jealousy are things ca that can destroy families. Envy, jealousy. All these little things that we experience, hatred amongst each other. These are things that would destroy families. So when the prophet was, was building the community, building the Ummah, the, the, some of his wives, they, they, they felt just, they had jealousy, they had this, these things. So Allah revealed in the Quran to help safeguard them from their own selves. So Allah revealed to the prophet and was revealing in the Quran to help, because these were believers, these were Muslims, this is a new Muslim community. These are the example of people who are coming to, to be upright people. So they were in the house of the prophet. So they had to be on extraordinary example. They had to be exemplar in their example and in their, in their way of life. So then Allah revealed to say, hey, look, if you keep carrying on, the, the prophet, he will replace you. Get you out of here and replace you with someone else. Your character has to be like the character of the prophet because you are in the house of the prophet. So all of the sahabas, all of the companions of the prophet had to have extra ordinary character because they were right here with the prophet who was the icon of human excellence, Allah Waiba. So Allah revealed this surah to help safeguard the family. Allahu Akbar. Mm. And this thing, this weekend, is building sustainable family and community life. Building sustainable family and community life. When we think about our history of indigenous people in this country, there were outside forces who directly came and destroyed our family life. A direct attack. Not only did we destroy our own families from our own ignorance, from jealousy and envy, but we had extra uh, enemies outside coming to destroy the family. So we had our own ignorance from inside, and we had enemies from outside coming to destroy our family. So a stranger came, and this weekend, Imam Muhammad said, Savior's Day is a remembrance and a celebration. Savior's Day is a remembrance and a celebration. So we are remembering the history of the past and we're celebrating that. Why are we celebrating? Because we're celebrating how the religion of Al-Islam came to us in a strange way. It came to us in a strange way. See, we didn't receive Al-Islam like other Muslims did. They go to the masjid or some one of the IEs go to them and they teach them about the Muhammad the Prophet. That's not how Al-Islam came to us. See, Al-Islam came to us from a stranger. A stranger who came to the Americas and who we refer to himself as W.D. Farah. Yeah. A stranger. Yeah. And when he witnessed the situations and the circumstances that was happening in the black communities, 
he was appalled. He was just dumbfounded because he himself was coming from poor circumstances in his country, in India. He was coming from India, and he was coming from India in protest because of the circumstances and the situation that was taking place in India. So, but when he came to the Americas and witnessed, he went straight to the city of Detroit called the Black Body. It blew his mind with the things that he witnessed, blew his mind. You see, we as a people, when we think about Africans and their condition, See, we experience a condition here in the Americas that no other people on the planet experience. A peculiar experience and a peculiar slave-making process that nobody else went through. A peculiar situation no other people experience. You say, oh, well, brother, what about the Africans? They, they went through colonization. Yes, that's true. And I've been to Africa a couple of times. But when you go to Africa, and you speak to the people, they know their tribal connection, their tribal name. They can tell you on their mother's side who their tribe is and on their father's side. So even though they were colonized, they didn't experience the experience, this peculiar situation that we went through. We were compared to, we were robbed of our religion, our language, everything. All that was taken away, stripped away from us. And they experimented on us. They experimented on us like no other people. So when this Farad, who we found later was an alias, that wasn't his real name. He went by several names. W.D. Farad, W.D. Farad Muhammad. Several different names he used, but these were all aliases. These were all aliases. So when this Farad came to the Americas and saw the condition of the people, he was blown away. Now, remember, he came in protest. He was coming, rejecting the conditions that was taking place in India. He came uh, in protest. So when he saw the conditions of people in the Americas and going through some of the same and even worse conditions that he left, Allah inspired him to try to do something about the situation and the circumstance. So he did. So he did. He came to the Americas and in a strange way. And he would go to the streets of Detroit as a, as a street peddler. And he would start reminding the people, teaching al-Islam, but not al-Islam how we know and how we understand it today. He packaged it for the circumstances of the people that they were living in. Here are people who were called apes. Monkeys. They said that our, we weren't even fit to live amongst in the human family. We didn't, we didn't even we didn't even fit in the in the human family. And you know they say, oh yeah, you know uh, most black people come from uh, Lucy. Lucy. Well, you know Lucy is just a cute and another way of calling you a monkey because the primate Lucy is just a monkey. And we know when we study genes, the science in your gene trait is what you are. So none of us in our gene trait produce monkeys. Huh? Allah Akbar. In the fitra of Allah, the way Allah has designed the genes, you don't uh, uh, oh, have human beings and then uh, later you have a monkey in there. No, that's not how. Now, now I had a relative. Now, he did look like a, a monkey. But, but, but he was not a monkey, he was a human being. But if you look at it, we used to laugh. So, oh, we, he looked like a monkey. We were young, we didn't know any better. He looked like a monkey. <laughs> but he wasn't a monkey, he was a human being. He was a human being. And, but when we look at the history in America, they said that we as people were not fit, even in the human family. We were worse than, we were worse than monkeys, worse than apes. So here this Farad came and saw these circumstances and he started teaching, he started teaching, he started teaching. And he packaged this religion of Al-Islam to fit our circumstances and our condition. So he said, you are the lost tribe of Shabazz. The lost tribe of Shabazz. Because we were lost. 
we had no connection to a tribe. And Allah tells us in the Quran, every history of a people are connected to a tribe. Allah says, you created you from nation and tribe. So all people connect back to a tribe. Everybody connects to a tribe. And when you go to Africa, they can tell you about their tribes. So they didn't go through the experience that we went through. We had no knowledge of ourselves, no knowledge of our history, our past, no knowledge of our religion. So we had no connection to a tribe or anything. So he said, you are the lost tribe of Shabbat. Lost tribe. So this is language that we, none of us heard before. Right. We were Christians going to the Christian church. That's all we knew. That's all we knew about God. But when you think about God, and when the image of God came to your mind, the image was something that didn't look anything like you. And the image that came to your mind looked like the people who were doing the oppression and the worst things to you. So this Farad, this person, he came and it is, he, he said that he was, he was born in Mecca. And he was born February 26, 1877. Now, this is what he shared with the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, who was Elijah Poo at the time. So he said he was born in 1877, February 26, 1877. So after this Farad left, he mysteriously left, left the scene. He was with the most honorable Elijah Muhammad from 1930 to 1933. And in 34, he just disappeared. He mysteriously disappeared. He left. He was gone. So the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, who this stranger was teaching and sharing different things, Bible script, and he told him about the Quran. The Quran is, is, the, is the most revered book. It has wisdom and knowledge in it. So the most honorable Elijah Muhammad told us to put us on the highest part of the house. Don't disrespect the book. The book should be so reverenced that it, we should put it on the highest part of the house. Don't put it down low. Put it up high. So this, the, the, what this stranger left, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. So when he, the only Elijah Muhammad, he started having annual uh, conventions or meetings for the new Muslims in the nation of Islam. So he established a day as Savior's Day for his Savior who taught him what he taught him and raised him up out of the filth and the muck and the mire and raised him up as a man. So this is what the Holy Light Muhammad gave to us as Savior's Day. So we celebrated Savior's Day as an annual convention on the birth, so-called birth, of this W.D. Farad. Now, Imam Muhammad asked us to study the history, study Farad's history. And I remember uh, at one of the youth conferences, I think it was in Atlanta or, or D.C., I was there, and he asked us to do this. And he said some things to the young people. He said, I'm going to share these things with you because maybe you'll get it because the adults, they won't get it. But he said, we should study our history. We should study Farad's history. So I took that. I took that up and I started studying Farad's history and come to find out. Farad was just an alias. That wasn't his name. And when I, in my studies, there was a, a person by the name of Muhammad Abdullah who lived in, in uh, Northern California. And I met him maybe once or twice. I was maybe nine or 10 years old, I believe it was. It was in the late 70s, this, this, this Muhammad Abdullah. <clears throat> and every time this Muhammad Abdullah would be around, some of the people would start whispering, that's, that's Muhammad, that's Muhammad. I remember that. I didn't know who he was. I just know that this is some Arab teaching, teaching the Muslim. We just came out of the nation of Islam, yeah. and here's an Arab man teaching us. I didn't know. I said, okay, I'm Bilal. You know, hey, got an Arab teaching us. I'm Bilal, you know. But it, it was something special about this Muhammad Abdullah. Okay. It was later, after Muhammad Abdullah's passing, Imam Muhammad shared with us that that was Farah. I said, wow, okay. So I said, okay, now let's make sense out of this. Mm -hmm. Now, Muhammad Abdullah, his real birth date was. June 15, 1905. 
And his real death date was June 18, 1992. So I said, well, what is this about him being born in 1877? What is that? What? Let me make sense of this. Because this Farad personality disappeared. Well, I started studying the situation and the circumstances. The Bible says, study, study the history, study the circumstances, study what was going on. Well, it just so happened in India, the country or the, the country of India, India was going through so much. And in January of 1877, the political climate in India, they were going through civil wars all throughout India. And they had elected, uh, let's see, Queen, let's see, what is her? I believe it was, uh, let's see, Queen Victoria. Queen Victoria of Great Britain, Great Britain. They had elected her as, as, the, as, the, as the Queen of India, the Empress of India, 1877. So that means that India was under British rule in 1877. Also, at the same time in 1877, there was a great famine that took place in 1877. Over 10 million people were killed because of the famine, because of the, the oppression that the British had put on the Indian people. Over 10 million people died. So when Farad came, he came in protest. So Farad, not the physical Farad, was born. The mind of Farad was born in 1877. Not the physical flesh body of Farad. The mind of Farad was born in 1877. February 26, 1877. Not only that, what else took place? February 26, 1877. In this country, see, Farad studied. He studied the conditions of the people, what was taking place in the history. Also, in the history of America, February 26, 1877, blacks were frauded against. Because do you all know that during the Reconstruction era, the Republican Party was all black. Did you know that? Did you know that President Lincoln was voted in by mostly black voters, free people, not slaves, free people? So Lincoln was assassinated. He was killed. But in 1877, the Democrats and the Republicans came together and they committed fraud against the people. They cheated. We hear about voter fraud, but well, they were doing voter fraud way back then. And that was the biggest scandal in 1877 of voter fraud. So the Republicans and the Democrats came together and they conspired against the people. So Farad studied this history. So the freedoms that Blacks once had, the Black politicians, Black schools, Black banks, we had more Black schools and Black banks back in 1877 that we never had. That's the history of the United States of America. In this country, we had black schools, all of these things. So Farah studied this, and he studied that February 26, 1877, the biggest fraud took place in American history against the people. But they don't teach us that in school, but Farah was students. He was a student. In fact, he was a student at... Uh, Right in Northern, in Northern California, he was, he was in, in, in the university system studying, going to school. So he studied this. So if you look at the word father, broad, broad, he called himself, he's, he named himself coming in the name of fraud. So he, his birthday was the same day they committed fraud against the people. Wow. So he came and said, that's my birthday. The mind of Farad was born. Mm. February 26, 1877. Allahu Akbar. So we thank Allah. We thank Allah for the religion of al Islam coming to us in a strange way. Because we were in a strange circumstance, a strange situation that nobody has experienced. Nobody experienced the, certain, the things that we witnessed. Allahu Akbar. So Allah sent a stranger. Allah sent a stranger by the name of W.D. Farah. And he began to teach and share and wake up until where we had a community of people talking about Asalaamu Alaikum, talking about Allah is God. Huh? Yes. 
Allahu Akbar. Yeah. Never heard in these streets of America. So this Farah, but he disappeared. He disappeared. But he came back and he was continuously working and writing and communicating with the almost son of like Muhammad and Imam Muhammad. We, 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 we know that, that Muhammad Abdullah, who once was W.D. Farad, because Farad had to disappear because the CIA, the FBI, everybody was looking for him. You see? And, and, and when you're dealing with people who were called worse, less than animals, the psychology of those people, you know, they, they still have a lot. Got a lot of trauma, a lot of baggage. So even those who were in that community in the early 1930s, they had baggage. So a couple of them, you know, when they that the esoteric language that Farah was using, black man is God, white man is the devil. So you got to be careful with certain if they're not educated properly, they're gonna take that literally. So some people took it literally and they went and killed the devil. See, they was killing the devil, took the language out of context, took the powerful language that was used to raise us up. Because the language that they were using, they was calling us worse than animals. So Farah used language to try to reverse that. He was using powerful language to try to bring us out of the less than animal stage and bring us up to be human beings. And alhamdulillah, like Imam Muhammad said, it worked. Allahu Akbar, it worked. But some people got caught up. And so in the early stages of the community, a few people got caught up, and so the FBI, some people got hurt, got killed, unfortunately. So the FBI was looking for him for us, so he disappeared. He had to disappear, you know? And, and, uh, and as we know, uh, Muhammad Abdullah, as we know it, he was communicating, working with most of the and Imam Muhammad. So we thank Allah. So Imam Muhammad told us, because we, we changed it when Imam Muhammad became the leader of the community. He changed it from Savior's Day to what? Survival Day. To, from Savior's Day to Survival Day. And then he came back, I think it was in the early 90s, I believe, and, uh, and, and reinstituted Savior's Day for anyone who is helping humanity, they're a Savior. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. So we thank Allah for our history. We thank Allah for our past. You know, we hear people, they say, oh, brother, why, why does he have to call himself honorable? Brother, why, why, you know, why does he, why does he have to call himself honorable? Well, Allah says, well, I can now, who he bang Adam. All children of Adam are made honorable because Allah said, he just had the wisdom enough to call himself honorable yes. and have the people look at themselves honorable. Allahu Akbar. This was before he really even understood the knowledge of the Quran. Before he even knew. But Allah inspired him, inspired his teacher to use certain words to incite the spirit in us to raise us up to be the rightful human beings. Now these people are the inheritors of the religion. And now we are teaching the world the religion of al -Islam. And now our job is to remake the world. Right. Dear beloved believers, peace be unto you. We thank you. Uh, As-salamu alaykum. Ikaamatu salam. Very good. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an Muhammad ar-Rasulullah. Ashhadu an Muhammad ar-Rasulullah. Allah salam. Allah salam. I love for that. I love for that. Because coming to the left, because coming to the left. Allah Hu Akbar, Allah Hu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Allah. 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 Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim.
Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Nabudu wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeen Sirat Al-Ladina Namta Alayhim Wairi Al-Mahdubi Alayhim Waladhalli Amin Iza Jaa Al-Nasrullahi Wal-Fat ورأيت الناس يركضون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفر إنه كان توابا الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر Allah Akbar Allah Akbar Allah Akbar Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Malik Yawm al-Din Iyaka al-Nawdu wa Iyaka al-Nasta'in Ihdina Sirat al-Mustaqeen سنات الذين نمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا ضالين قل أعوذ برب الناس مالك الناس إله الناس من شر وسواس الناس الذي وسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس Allahu Akbar. Sami Allah liman hamida. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. I'd like to thank our brother Hatik Muhammad II for the excellent uh, Zoom presentation and uh, the, uh, the announcement. Save your stay. Uh, it is tomorrow. Uh, and, uh, September, uh, not September. February 26th. Good morning, I mean, <laughs> let me slow down. <laughs> Um, so, uh, same stays tomorrow. We're going to be here tomorrow, uh, and uh, we're going to have it on uh, on the, the TV. And so, uh, please uh, register for Save the Day. And uh, uh, again, we'll be here, and uh, we'll have it on uh, uh, Big Screen TV. And then uh, some of the people is going to be speaking, uh, and uh, we'll have those who can bend, they're going to bend here. And, and so forth. And uh, we will, uh, uh, I mean, uh, just so as we uh, normally do, uh, we, we, we go out and get food. You know, so, and uh, we'll get the food. My spirit, uh, I use the page for it. But, uh, we, we're going to go out and get it. Uh, we're, where where can the about. people register? Huh? Where can the people register? Uh, people can register right here. Plus, they can go to savingsday.net, savingsday.net. And uh, uh, to register for the Savings Day uh, program. And um, uh, also, we're here at the Mosquitoes building. Uh, we're, we're taking a registration here also. 
Um, I was waiting for Brother Hill to come up here so he can. No, no, you got it. You got it. Okay. So, like I said, we'll be here tomorrow. And uh, Savior's Day is our day, uh, our day and uh, Brother Hafid Muhammad uh, the second did an excellent presentation oh, yeah. on, on uh, uh, Savior's Day. Uh, uh, history, uh, really. How it uh, evolved to where it is now. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's a family affair. And I'm not 